Shall I tell you? Shall I? Shall I tell you everything? Mind the gap. Are you sure you want to hear? King Solomon's Carpet, by Barbara Vine, dramatized for radio in four episodes by Nick Fisher. Episode one: You left your baby, but took the violin. How absolutely delightful! It's Edwardian. There's heavy precious stones on the lid, and the figurine itself is pure crystal. She's so delicate, as is the tune. Clear and light as the very air itself. <laughs> It wouldn't be London air then. <laughs> no, possibly in Derbyshire though.、Oh, that's home, is it? It was once. A beautiful place called Temple Stephen. I'm here now, though I don't much like cities.、Mm-hmm. I suppose they're not for everyone. But there are such good shops. I'd never find this in Derbyshire. How much is it? Four hundred and fifty pounds. I'll take it. Mind the gap. London has the world's oldest metro system. It dates back to 1863, to a Victorian London of slums, of gaslight, of the powerless and the poor. The powerless and the poor. If you could just sign here. Thank you. Have you got far to go now?、Uh, Bond Street.、Uh, there's plenty of cabs round here, I suppose.、Uh, well, yes, but the traffic will be dreadful at this time of day. It would take you forever just getting out of Hampstead. You'd be much faster on the tube.、Oh, I wouldn't dream of travelling on that. I've always had chauffeurs and taxis, all my life. Death. Death visited Piccadilly Underground Station in November 1927. When a porter tried to close the gate of a moving train, he was dragged along the platform to the tunnel portal, where he died on impact. Now, you know you're not good in crowds, and the doctors have said you're really not very strong at all. But it would be an adventure to see what all those people have to use day in, day out. Every year, about two hundred people try to kill themselves in the London Underground. Half this number is successful. Even those who can't dive, who wouldn't dream of diving into water, dive rather than jump in front of the oncoming train. How deep and dark and noisy and dirty! How can everyone look so calm and composed, squashed in these tunnels? The answer, my friend, is blowing in the wind. The answer is blowing in the wind. Those white and buff towels remind me of something. Of course, the servants' bathrooms at Temple Stephen. How I wish I was. Come along, concentrate on the map. At. Tottenham Court Road. You changed the central line from the black route to the red one. It'll be easy. You'll be fine. The fire began when a lighted match fell through an escalator, which led from the Piccadilly line platforms to the main ticket hall concourse. Thirty-one people died. How many years must one man have before he can hear people cry? So the next stop will be Mornington Crescent, and after that, only four more stations to Tottenham Court Road. Euston, but that doesn't make sense. That can't be right. It has to be Mornington Crescent. The map shows. The map shows I'm on the wrong train. The northern line splits in two. Next stop now, King's Cross. I, I don't want to go there. I don't. Calm. Be calm. You can change at Bank onto the Central Line. 
That's what you'll do, and it'll be all right. The worst accident before the King's Cross fire was on the 28th of February, 1975, when a train hit the end of a tunnel at Moorgate, killing 43 people. How many deaths will it take till he knows that too many people have died? Bang. Now, go with the flow. God, it's like a tide. So many people. Go with the flow. Keep your head up. Survive. Where's the central line? The answer, my friend, is blowing in the wind. The answer is blowing in the wind. At last. But it's so full. More people? No. No more. There's not enough space. Surely there must be a law stopping people. No, no more. No. We're moving. Good. It's terribly hot. Too hot. Something's wrong. Why doesn't somebody do something? Why are they so calm? I'm wet through with sweat. It's so... What? Why have we stopped? This isn't a station. I don't want to be in a tunnel. I want to be in the fresh air. I've never been with so many people. I don't want these bodies crushed up against me. Oh, thank God. Stay calm. Stay calm. Please, get that, that iron claw off me. Your heart has something wrong with it. The doctor said you have a weak valve. They found a murmur. Get that claw off. You've dropped it. Silly you. You've dropped it. And poor figurine's broken. What's happening? What's... You're dying. That's what's happening. Here, in the dark, in this horrible tube, being crushed by these calm strangers. Dying. And no one knows. Does a twin know? Will he feel something now? Somehow now, with you, as you die. You've just died. Another death. Nothing special about it. Hardly a disaster. Nothing to interest me. Six months later. London, October 1989. Hello, Jarvis. It's Tom. From yesterday? Of course. Yeah. Uh, you've decided to take the room? Well, if, if it's still available, <laughs> um, several are. Uh, oh. Sorry, uh, do come in. <laughs> Welcome to the school. The school? Hmm. Uh, that's what everyone calls the house. It actually was a school once, but uh, I was too young to remember it. Uh, my grandfather ran it, but he died when I was five. Have you been here long, then? Not really. It was empty for a while. It's still pretty run down, as you can see. And it was a commune for quite a long time. Come through. Excuse the mess. Shake kitchen. Same goes for the two bathrooms, though Tina has her own. Tina being... And my cousin, once removed. She's been here longer than me, in a way. Uh, she set up the commune until they all ambled off to Devon for a bit, the way communes do, I suppose. Then she sort of drifted back recently with two kids in tow. That's Tina for you. So there's a whole family here? Not quite. The father, Brian, doesn't live here. He pays the rent, though, indirectly. Gives Tina £50 a week or something. Maintenance for the kids, Jasper and Bianvida. Anyway, 
I'm sure you like her. Everyone seems to, especially men. She practically has a new one every week. Oh, well, I'm sure we'll get on. Well, I think I'll let you have four. S sorry? <laughs> oh, it's still numbered like the school it once was. I've always had three. That used to be the third forms. Uh, is that the biggest? Lord, no, that's not important. No, no, it's got the best view of the Jubilee line. Well, that's a plus? Definitely. I love the tube. In fact, I'm writing a book on it. But you must like the tube yourself. Well, it's my place of work. Nice to hear classical music down there. Uh, I hate rock music and all those endless Bob Dylan songs blowing in the wind. There's no reason why busking shouldn't be top classical quality. Well, what I heard yesterday was that's why I stopped and chatted. Hmm. Hi, Jarvis. Oh, Tina. Um, meet Tom. Classical busker supreme and our new lodger. Oh, pleased Hi. to meet you. Have you seen Peter? Um, he might be upstairs. Shall I see? No, I can go. It won't be a tick. He's very sweet, but a real eccentric. He lives for his metro systems. Distracting from the pains of life, I suppose. Uh, who's Peter? Oh, another lodger. The son of my mum's best friend. <laughs> You're bound to meet her soon, too. She lives just round the corner. Likes to keep an eye on how badly I'm bringing up the kids. <laughs> She's the late Ernest Jarvis's sister. It's all a bit incestuous, isn't it? Uh, I'm rather lost, actually. Who's Ernest Jarvis? Now, Jarvis's grandfather, who ran oh. the school till he decided he'd had enough and wrapped the bell rope round his neck before hopping off a chair. He did what? Didn't Jarvis tell you? He said he died, but... Well, yeah, well, that's true enough, as far as it goes. There, there's a cloakroom off the hall, which used to be the bell ringer's room, and a rope went all the way up to the bell on the roof. Not that it was ever used. Jarvis's grandfather was persuaded his school was a touch too posh and that sort of thing. So the only time it ever rang, so my mum tells me, I was just seven, was um, when he hanged himself by it. I see. How terrible. Oh, don't worry, I haven't bumped into any ghosts. <laughs> yet. <laughs> now, how about a nice cup of tea? Less than a hundred pounds won't go far in London. Well, you'll just have to find work, won't you? You'll be working in the capital, just like Mike. But you won't be living with him anymore. Hush, hush. Yeah, it's all right. It's all right. No. No, it's not all right. Not remotely. How could it be after... After what I've just done... Thanks. Cheers. <laughs> when I was last in London, the only busking I heard was rock music. Ah, we're different. You're a musician yourself. How? Oh, a bit of a giveaway, isn't it? Hmm. Yes, it wasn't my violin I left behind. Sorry? I, um, I studied at the Royal Academy just over a year ago now. Ah. Look, why don't you join us? Oh, I don't <laughs> think. No, no, really, we'd, we'd love it. A trio would be terrific. Oh, you'll easily fit in with us. I don't know. I mean, I'm ever so rusty. I haven't actually played a note in eight months. Then it's high time you did. Please. Well, all right. Ah, great. I'm <laughs> um, sorry, sorry. I'm Tom, and this is Peter. Hi. I'm Alice. Uh. We've been playing Bach's double violin concerto lately, but without the violin, so it's hardly been all the composer envisaged. Do you know it? I adore it. Ready? And... The first section of the London Underground ran from Farringdon to Paddington and was opened in 1863. Building it necessitated diverting the course of three rivers. The work was done by men inexperienced in the task. No one had done it before. But at least they didn't encounter what the builders of the Moscow Underground were to come up against. A quicksand in their path. You were wonderful. We made a lot more than normal. Um, here's your share. Oh, I can't take that. No, I asked Peter. We both think you earned it. No, really. 
Look, I should be going. That wine's rather gone to my head. Going? Where to? A little hotel in Bloomsbury. Uh, do you know people there? Not really. It doesn't sound much fun. Life isn't always fun. No. Please, please have some more. I can't drink the whole bottle myself. Well, all right. Where did you study? Guildhall, but I didn't finish. Why not? I was in a motorbike accident. I had a broken leg, broken ribs and a badly shattered... Left hand. I noticed while you were playing. Hmm. The surgeon said, lucky you're not a pianist. <laughs> Idiot. I suppose he thinks you play the flute with just your mouth. <sighs> but I won't tell you the worst bit. They did a brain scan. They said everything was fine, but I changed. How else to explain the new temper, the irritability, the headaches... And the loss of ambition, my lost music, the lost love of it, the lost need of it. At least I've retrieved some of that. So, now I'm a professional busker. You should reapply to the Guildhall. Mm. Under the circumstances, I'm sure they'd have you back. Yeah, one day, perhaps. So, what's your story? My story. What are you up to? Where are you going? A beautiful young woman like you? I don't know. What do you mean? Well, I... I'm sorry, I don't want to talk about me. Listen, uh, if you need a sympathetic ear, if you're in some sort of trouble... Trouble? I've just left my husband. I see. No. No, you don't. It's much worse than that. I mean, Mike. Leaving Mike, that's nothing, because I... I left my baby daughter, too. My one-month-old baby. I wasn't going to tell anyone, but I can't. I can't not tell someone that I left Catherine. Hey, 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 easy. Tell me about it. It's no good keeping these things in. Talking to someone you hardly know can be the best, like the Samaritans. Oh, oh God. I... I'd just finished at the Royal Academy, and I got pregnant. Well, Mike, my boyfriend, was delighted. He asked me to marry him. It's what he wanted all along. The, the baby wasn't planned? No. Mm. Why didn't you have an abortion? Oh, I thought about it. But there was so much pressure from Mike, his mother, my parents. I'm really not a very strong person. So I gave in. I got married, had a terrible pregnancy, stopped playing. And a month ago, I had a little baby girl, Catherine. What were your plans before all this? I was going to be a concert violinist. And I... Well, that's still what I'm going to be. That's why I... That's why I ran away. That's why... You left her. Listen, I, I can't let you go off to some hotel all by yourself. That would be too terrible. Peter and I live at the same place, a huge old house in West Hampstead called The School. Peter's been there a while. I've only just moved in. There are other rooms to let, far cheaper than any hotel, and you'd have company. Come and join us at The School, Alice. The map of the London Underground is a model of its kind, a work of art. It was designed by Henry Beck and first used in 1933. It has since been reproduced millions of times and has served as a blueprint for metro maps all over the world. It presents the underground network as a geometric grid, simplified and explicable. Shall I tell you? Shall I tell you why no one ever goes in there? Is it frightening? Yeah. It's frightening, all right. Perhaps I'll save it till later, when it's dark, so it'll be even more scary. I don't like it. Don't be so wet, B. You know what I fancy? A cigarette. Jess, you'll get lung cancer. Don't be daft. Have you ever heard of anyone of nine getting lung cancer? Let's go down to the shop and see if we can nick some. Hello, it's me. Mother, it's me, Alice. I'm not deaf. I heard you the first time. 
I think you must have lost your mind. I had to leave. If I'd hung on any longer, I might never have gone. When are you coming back? I'm not. Uh, don't be so stupid. You must. You're obviously having some sort of a breakdown. Well, tell me where you are and Daddy will come and fetch you. You need to see a doctor. Mother, I didn't leave because I've gone mad. I left because I want to be a musician, not just somebody's mother and somebody's wife. Oh, yes. You took your violin, didn't you? You left your baby, but you took your violin. Mother! The tube lines do not, of course, lie neatly at right angles to one another as they're presented on Beck's map. Nor do they branch off at acute angles or form perfect oblongs. A true map of the underground shows the central area to be a tangle of indescribable complexity. I thought I just saw Jasper and Ben Vida, dear. But it couldn't have been them, could it, because they're at school? Mm, well, they should be. Mind you, Jasper's forever skiving off in his lunch hour. Twelve's a bit early for lunch. Especially as we're at least 15 minutes' walk from their school. Oh, Mum, don't worry. My kids will always be all right. Well, if you say so. Oh, what do you think of the cake I've done for Bee's birthday? Lovely! And I'm so pleased to see you wearing that apron. I know how you normally never bother and get flour all over your clothes. Yeah, <laughs> can't think what made me remember it. So, what are you up to today, then? I'm meeting dear Daphne for lunch in D.H. Evans. <laughs> <laughs> dear Daphne. You know what I've always thought, Mum? That if you and Daphne had been young today, you'd have realised you were in love and just lived with each other. Tina, what a terrible thing to say. Well, nonsense. If that's the way you are, that's the way you are. It's still not too late, you know. Tina, Daphne is my closest friend. She's been that since our first day at school when we were five. I'm naturally very fond of her. Just like Peter is fond of Jay. Oh, he'll grow out of all that. Daphne said only last week that when he meets the right girl, he'll feel differently. No, uh, not Peter. Believe me, I know. Perhaps he'll fall for that beautiful young woman I just saw in the hall. Or Alice. Mm, yeah, you're right about her look. She's stunning, isn't she? But I'm afraid she curves in all the wrong places for Peter. Besides, Tom's clearly got his eye on her. Yes, well, I'd better be going or I'll be late. The outer configurations of the tube are clearer as they branch out in graceful tentacles into Middlesex and Hertfordshire, Essex and Surrey. The reach is greater than one may at first imagine. Bye then, Mum. Give my love to Auntie Daphne. What was that? A bomb. Oh, it could have been a car backfiring. No, I heard a lot of bombs in the war falling on this very street. That was definitely a bomb. Oh. Well, goodbye, dear. I'll drop by again later. Bye, Mum. Get me some treats from Selfridges. What was that noise? Oh, it could have been anything. My mum's convinced it was a bomb. Whatever, it was a long way off. Do you see a lot of your mother? I'd say. She's in and out all the time, checking on the way I'm looking after the kids, or rather not looking after them, in her opinion. Where's their father? Where? I've no idea. But then I've no idea who their father is. Or rather, who their fathers are. I do know it's two different men. Everyone, including Brian, thinks he's their father, but he's not. And I should know. But I'm hardly going to tell anyone. Not when he provides the maintenance. And Mum would practically have a seizure if she ever found out. Oh, Brian and I went our separate ways ages ago. We still get on perfectly well, mind you. And, of course, like the good father he is, he comes to visit and takes his beloved Jasper and Bee on trips. Let's have a cup of tea, shall we? Right. Time for you to get changed. Then we'll go for a little trip, shall we? A little leisurely tour. And we'll have a bit of fun while we're about it. A bit of harmless fun on the tube. Play with a few people, shall we? If only she'd watch those children a bit more. I suppose she knows what she's doing. But it's all so different these days, I can't keep up. Things change so quickly. So, let's have a look at you. Impressive. You'd fool them at the zoo, you know. 
pop you in one of those enclosures with a sign saying do not feed, everyone would buy you as a real thing. <laughs> now, let's just pop your collar and chain on. The only person I'd happily share with is Daphne. Dear Daphne. Now, there's something in this world that doesn't change. Our wonderful friendship. How could Gina say such a dreadful thing? Funny how getting everyone to stare at you is the best way for getting them not to notice what you're really about. Familiarity is very handy too. They get used to seeing you, so they think you're harmless. They've seen you a lot. You've done nothing bad. Why would you be bad now? Right. I'll carry the Semtex. I do so love meeting up with Daphne at D.H. Evans. There's such a comfort to be... Oh, oh it's all right, madam. It's just a little trouble brewing. <laughs> Get it? Trouble brewing? Brewing the bear? Trouble? Oh, never mind. Brewing? I don't know if you should have your paw on that woman's knee. She's trembling. And I know why, because she can't bear it. <laughs> bear it, Bruin. <laughs> bear it. Leave me alone, please. Get that paw off my leg. What do you want with me? Please, what do you want? Shall I tell you? Shall I? Are you sure you want to hear? In episode one of King Solomon's Carpet by Barbara Vine, dramatized for radio by Nick Fisher, Tom was played by Jonathan Cullen, Alice by Kate Fennick, and Axel by Mark Strong. Jarvis was Kim Wall, Cecilia Ann Beach, Tina Alice Arnold, and Peter Christopher Scott. Jasper was played by Stuart Morris, and Bienvida by Verity Waite. Colleen Prendergast was the woman on the tube. Other parts were played by Shirley Dixon, Christopher Pablo, Elaine Pike, and Alex Lowe. The musicians were Polly Hewitt, Roland Robert, and Christine Messeter. King Solomon's Carpet was directed by Marion Nancaro. King Solomon's Carpet by Barbara Vine. Dramatized for radio in four episodes by Nick Fisher. Episode 2, Sledging the District. London, 1989. While the new arrivals, Tom and Alice, are settling into Jarvis's home, the school, Tina's mother is encountering some trouble on the tube. Shall I tell you what happened? Shall I? What do you want with me? Please, take that paw off my leg. Let me go. There was once a plan for gaslit subway streets in central London through which horse-drawn traffic could pass. This was rejected on the grounds that such sinister tunnels would become lurking places for thieves and other ne'er-do-wells. Please, I've done nothing to you. That's true enough. But the reason why Bruin the Bear is behaving as he is is surely obvious. He has to. It's simply the bare necessities. <laughs> the bare necessities, eh, Bruin? <laughs> but it's time for us to be getting along. He really is quite gentle, you know, madam. It doesn't bear comparison with the real thing. <laughs> bear comparison. <laughs> Shall I tell you what's going to happen tonight? Your birthday's going to wind up the same as always be, with Mum kissing that new bloke of hers. Do you think she'll ever go back to Daddy? Daddy? Are you still wearing nappies? To Brian, I mean. Will she? I hope not. Why? Because there are things I like about living here. Cecilia, there you are at last. I was just beginning... Cecilia, are you all right? I'm so pleased to see you, Daphne. I've just had the most terrible time. Sit down, dear. Here, have some water. Now, 
Tell me exactly what happened. A man and a bear got on the tube with me. A bear? Oh, not a real one, of course. Though I did think for a moment or two. It was a man in a bear costume being led on a collar and chain by another man. What did they do? Made silly jokes and kept taunting me. The worst thing was the bear kept pouring my legs. Sissy, did you tell the authorities? Well, what could they do? They'd say it was just a prank or something. Besides, I wanted to be with you, not with transport police. Oh, oh how horrible for you. But just to see your sweet, dear face in front of me helped so much. If you and Daphne had been young today, you'd have realised you were in love with each other and just lived together. Are you sure you're all right? You look awfully flushed. I was just thinking... Let's have a look at the menu. Here. Did you hear about the bomb, by the way? I knew it was a bomb. I said to Tina. Where was it? There's water. Two dead, five injured. No one's claimed responsibility. How terrible. Isn't it? So, you saw Tina. How are the grandchildren? Today's B&B's B &B birthday, so Tina's baked a cake, and this evening they're going to have a little party at the school. Oh. I'm sure Jasper and B&B &B will have a lovely time. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to dance, Alice? Thanks, Jarvis, but not at the moment. I like just listening to Tom. Oh, right, right, of course. Um, we've got enough candles on the go. I've got plenty more. <gasps> We're attracting enough mosquitoes, as it is. <laughs> OK, right, right, um... More wine, anyone? Oh, yes, please. <laughs> Jarvis, who's that with Tina? Ah, uh, he works at some off-license. She picked him up yesterday afternoon. <laughs> Typical Tina. Uh, are you Chardonnay or Sauvignon? Chardonnay. Where have Jasper and Bianvida got to? Oh, they're around here somewhere. Nothing to worry about there. <gasps> Jess, I just put my hand in something horrible. Shall I tell you what it was? What? A dead person's stomach like they'd been cut open and I put my hand among the insides. Dead person's guts? It's cat food. It feels like a dead person's insides. Smells like it too. Give it a rest, B. Now look, there's holes in the floor and ceiling so a rope could go all the way down to the cloakroom and they could ring the bell. But they never did. As a birthday treat, shall I tell you why? Shall I tell you why no one ever uses the cloakroom? Is it nasty? It's not nice. Tell me anyway, I quite like being frightened. I heard Tina telling Tom that an old man who wasn't our grandfather, but something like that, killed himself. He hung himself from the bell rope. In those days, he came all the way down through the house and into the cloakroom, where this bloke hung himself. Sorry, I'm rather drunk. It doesn't matter. I've got another glass. You're very handsome, Tom. Especially in the candlelight. Oh, not as handsome as you're pretty. When we're busking, it's, it's you that everyone looks at. It's you that brings the crowds, Alice. But you are handsome. Like a hero in a western. <laughs> right, then. Oh, why can't you stay a little longer for once? Who said anything about going? But why... Oh, it's hot. So I think I'd better take something off. Should I start with... this... Oh, and, and these are much too hot. Hmm. I feel so constrained, so restricted, so... Shall I? Shall I take it off? Is that what you like? There. And, and finally, they're so flimsy, so silly. I could take them off too. Shall I? 
Tom? Is that what you'd really like? You can only do this because you're drunk. You'll make love now, but you won't even remember tomorrow. You'll know you did it. You'll feel the dampness and know, but you won't remember. From the moment I first saw you, I knew we were made for each other. You can help me so much, Alice. You can save me. Tom, I can't even save myself. It may be easier to save someone else, though. You know exactly how it'll be. He'll make love like he plays the flute, precise and controlled, as if he'd studied it like he'd studied Bach's innovations. You're so beautiful. And you're sweet and handsome. And I love your music, your knowledge of it. The way we can talk about Wagner. <laughs> to have such a passion in common. I've never known that before. Nor have I. You're the one, Alice. The only one. You offer me so much. Yet it will never, ever be enough. Kiss me. Kiss me all over. So it's safe to chuck it about. I take it that's a positive growl, Ivan. I mean, I'd hate to make a mistake with this stuff. Semtex is pretty stable. You could throw a fag in there with no problem. It needs percussion to go up. Well, you keep teaching, I'll keep learning. Now, how's your footwork? I think perhaps you should be a dancing bear for a bit, Ivan. Some busybody will tell you to put it out. But it'll already be out, Baron. What are you talking about? It'll be a light, but it'll be out. Dean, Jazz has finally gone mental. It'll be outside the carriage. Watch. Now, as the door's shut, hold it in place so they're closed on it and... Hey, Presto! Don't even need to hold it. I can puff on that and no one will notice because the smoke's outside. Nice one, Chaz. Among things left behind on the underground have been pheasants, several turkeys, a suitcase full of Masonic regalia and £1,500 in cash. While that's left in the trains, what clutters the tunnels is cleaned at night by the fluffers who collect all the human hair that is shed imperceptibly, invisibly, by the millions who use the system. We've never made this much before. <laughs> An all-time record, I'd say. It's you, Alice. You're our beautiful, lucky charm. Please, not in public, Tom. I think it's time I counted the takings. Still only pennies, Tom. Nonsense, there's pounds there. But nothing like what we really need. For what? Our educations. What are you talking about? You said I'd save you? Well, I intend to, by making sure we get on. You're going to get your degree, and I'm going to find a really good teacher to get my violin progressing properly. We don't make nearly enough here to pay for things like that. It'll get better. I've got lots of plans. We need real money, Tom. That means real jobs. I've got to achieve what I set out to do. I've sacrificed too much not to get there. <sighs> We're rich. Seven pounds and sixty-three p. The Metropolitan and District Lines still operated steam trains in 1895, the date of Arthur Conan Doyle's Sherlock Holmes tale, the Bruce Partington plans. It would, of course, no longer be possible to do as Oberstein and Colonel Walter did and place a dead man on top of a train from a window in West London. Buildings are close to the line at Gloucester Road today, but not close enough to reach the roof of a passing train. Sledging? Yeah, sledging. Biting on the roof, Jazz. How'd you get up there, Dean? Easy. Go out one of the end doors. Don't go through to the next carriage, but climb up. And what's it like on the roof? smooth, and it curves to the edges, so you have to spread out like a starfish. Neat. Where have you done it, Dean? On the Metropolitan, from Latimer Road towards Hammersmith. No tunnels and no low bridges. Real. Would you ever do it on one of the underground bits? 
Would you? Maybe. The tunnels are pretty big on some sections. It'd be scary in the dark. But you'd have about 18 inches or so, wouldn't you? We could try the district. Come from West Kent. But you'd have to keep over to one side coming in to cross the road. Why? Because you'd have that pea brain of yours scrambled by the tunnel arch if you're in the middle, you dog. Illustrations from Sherlock Holmes' stories decorate the platforms at Baker Street, but the Bruce Partington plans with that body on the roof isn't among them. Can this be because London Transport's afraid it might give passengers ideas? Are you serious about getting tuition? Of course. I know of a good teacher. The problem's the expense. I'll give you the money. What I have is yours, Alice. That's <laughs> very kind, but really I have to get a job. What, you mean a bit of teaching in the evenings? No, a real job. A secretarial job. You're not serious. I should do it. I used to work for my father in the holidays and I got pretty good on the computer. Yes, but why? I need the money for the lessons. You couldn't carry on paying for them even if I let you start. I could earn loads. And it would only be for a year or so. But we make money already and enjoy it. We're playing real music and getting a real audience. And we've made £21 today. £7 each for a day's work. Tom, I haven't quite told you everything. I've actually applied for a job. I've got an interview coming up. You've what? I have to do this. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Absolutely bloody ridiculous. Calm down, Tom. People are looking. I will not calm down. Job... Secretary, we should stick with what we've got. I love it, and I love you. And nothing else matters. Love and music. It's all we need. Will you have some more cake, dear? Yes, please. It's delicious. Delicious? <laughs> what a grown-up word for you to use. Tell me, Jasper does go to school, doesn't he? He doesn't play truant. Jasper? No, nah, he's always there. Education is terribly important, you see. There you are. Thank you. Can I have some Smarties, too? Of course you can. I'll only have the orange ones. Why is that? They're nicest. They've got milk chocolate inside and taste of orange. All the other colours have plain chocolate and taste just the same. Why is that? I've no idea. Perhaps they'll teach us why at school. Well, perhaps. But you're sure about Jasper? Oh, yes. I'm really sure. No low bridges? Nope. No tunnels? Not this far, Al. Right. I fancy it. You're going to sledge? Yeah. Good for you, Jasper. Quick, up on the roof before we pull out again. Sit next station, Melbourne. It's more curved than I expected, and it's really smooth. No ridges or nothing. How can you hang on when it starts moving? Go back down. You've got time. What, and be called Chicken by Dean? No way. There are little bits to hang on to at the top of the double doors. Not much, but something. Right. Lie flat and get your fingers... Ah! Hang on. Hang on. You'll be all right. Grip. Grip. That's it. You're going to be all right. You can do it. Grip. Grip. Yeah. You've got it. Yeah. I can see why they call it sledging now. Just like a toboggan, only better. This beats bunking off school or nicking stuff from the shops. This beats anything. What time did he say? Nine o'clock. Oh. Oh, then he's only ten minutes late. Well, I hope he shows up. Oh, it'd be so brilliant, Tina. A trip to the metro systems of the Soviet Union. Rather you than me, poking about behind the Iron Curtain. Oh, I'm not bothered about that. He's some in-tourists, so the whole thing will be official. They won't think I'm a spy or anything. <laughs> Excuse me. Tina. Yeah? What? Oh, Dan, 
Antonio, my God. It's been, what, eight years or so? <laughs> More like ten. Oh, sorry, sorry, Jarvis, this is an old friend of mine. Daniel, this is Jarvis. I rent some rooms in his house. Hi. Oh, pleased to meet you. Are you with anyone? Not a soul. I'm footloose and fancy free. Oh, wonderful. Join us. I'm not interrupting. Oh, Jarvis is waiting for a friend. Oh, you remind me of someone, Daniel. I think it's the eyes. Hello, Jarvis. Oh, there you are at last. Ah, your London tube is not so punctual as ours in Moscow. Oh, lack of investment. Uh, uh, do have a seat. I'll get you a drink. Um, what would you like? Uh, vodka? Uh, not the kind they sell here. Oh. <laughs> a lager, please. Uh, you'll excuse us if we talk business. Ah, oh, go ahead. Daniel and I can get into a huddle of our own. Ah, good. Uh, pint of lager, please. It's so nice to see you. Denmark Hill, wasn't it? That's right. Didn't the bed creak terribly? You haven't changed a bit. Those timeless bedroom eyes. <laughs> Flattery, Daniel, will get you everywhere. Fancy coming to see my new abode later? The bed there hardly creaks at all. One lager. Cheers. Oh, Nostrovia. I have good news. The trip will be possible. And I hope we will include a visit to the earthquake-resistant metro in Tashkent. Really? Hmm. Oh, that'd be just brilliant. The Metro Systems of the World. An overview of the underground by Jarvis Stringer. Preface. King Solomon's carpet was a magic carpet fashioned of green silk. It was large enough for everyone to stand on. When ready, Solomon would tell the carpet where he wanted to go and it would rise in the air and land everyone at the spot they desired. The tube systems of the world are no more and no less than our modern equivalent of King Solomon's carpet. I did cross the road to Kensington High Street yesterday. Yeah? It's dead dark and a wallop. You're into the next station. Magic. I fancy doing Kensington High Street and then onto Bayswater. More than one station? You've done more than one, ain't you? Yeah, but I don't know anyone else who has. Good for you, Jazz. You've got bottom. How about you, Damon? I'm thinking about it. You mean you're still chicken? <laughs> Here we go, Jazz. I street Ken. Up you get. Good luck. He don't need luck. Skill and bottle. That's what it takes, Damon. Not chicken and luck. Skill. Starfish position. Hook. Fingers into double doorage. Press down onto car roof. Now it's a question of bottle. Looks like three foot to spare into the tunnel. No problem. It's dark, all right? Dead dark. That's what Dean said. Dead. What if there's anything sticking down from the tunnel roof? Stone or iron spikes? You'll be dead. This is scary. This ain't like in the open air. At least it's a nice straight bit. Not so hard keeping a grip. Speck of light ahead. Yeah. Not far now. Not in Hill Gate. Right. Now for the second bit. Two stations! Dean said he didn't know anyone else but him who'd done more than one. Just me and Dean it'll be. Here we go. Sledge in the district. Not a brick arch this time. A steel one. But it's not curved. It's not an arch at all. What? What's that chunk of metal? It's almost scraping the top of the cars. Waiting to take my head off. It's coming faster and faster. And... No! In 1947, a man was killed when his arm was trapped in the doors of a train at Lancaster Gate after he'd tried to force them open. He was dragged to the tunnel portal and died on impact. Well caught. Ever thought of taking up cricket, Bruin? Uh, cricket balls are a lot smaller than this. Let me go! You should be thanking Bruin for catching me. OK, thanks. Now, can I go? No. I want a little talk with you. You're hurting! I'm not going to tell you off, if that's what you're scared of. I ain't scared. I just don't want the police coming. Neither do I. I think you'd have made it, you know. It just looked too low. You weren't up there. How would you know? Fair enough. 
Come on. I'll buy you a pizza. Tom, we're supposed to be saving. We can afford the odd bottle. Well, I suppose that's true in a way. Because I... I got the job. You did what? You are looking at the personal secretary to James Christensen of Angle, Scherer and Christensen Solicitors in Hoban. Aren't you pleased? I never thought you'd pursue that. We need the money. You helped me by paying for my first lesson. Now I want to return the favour. Return the favour? What? What do you... I, I, I don't want your bloody gratitude. I'm sorry, I simply meant we sort of agreed to share things and do things together. Oh, I see. So, so that's what you call sneaking off to get this job, doing things together? Sharing things means the two of us making music, Alice. Doing what we've done since the day we found each other. Do you remember that? Do you? Tom! Tom, calm down! It was in Hoban Station. I'll never forget the moment I first saw you. But you, you'll just stroll through that corridor on your way to this job of yours and it won't even cross your bloody mind, will it? Oh, God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, please forgive me. It's just, I love you so. I want to do everything for you. But I feel so impotent. Please, hold me. Love me. My name is Axel. Axel Jonas, and you're... Jasper. Right, Jasper. The house special with extra cheese plus a large Coke. Why are you staring at Ivan? Because he thinks I'm so ugly. Why was he dressed like a bear? For his amusement and mine. Have you done a lot of riding on top of trains, Jasper? A bit. There's old stations down there that aren't used anymore, aren't there? Ghost stations, yeah. There's some between Baker Street and Finchley Road on the Metropolitan. Is there any way you could get off the roof onto these ghost stations? And is there any way out? Why do you want to know? He asked you a question. Could you get onto one of these stations? And then could you get out? I don't know. Are you sure? Yeah. Really? Really? Jarvis could tell you. Who's Jarvis? Just a man. Can I go? Who is Jarvis? I haven't got any money to get home with. Walk? To West Hampstead. So that's where you live? Does this Jarvis live there? Does he live with you? He might. He's your mother's boyfriend. No, he's not. Why would he know about ghost stations? He knows everything about the tube. He writes about it. Uh-huh. I'd like to talk to Jarvis. Where is he in West Hampstead? Hmm? You never told? No, I legged it. Then I took the long route back here so they wouldn't be able to follow me, even if they tried. They sound nasty, Jazz. Ivan the bear was dead ugly, like the Phantom of the Opera must be under that mask. And I think Axel might have been a vampire, like Dracula. What? He sticks his teeth in people's necks and eats the blood? Yeah, except you don't eat blood, you suck it and drink it. <laughs> oh, I've got a drink for you from school. I thought you'd like it because someone said it had cocaine in it. What? Lucas, eh? That's caffeine, not cocaine. Oh. Hello. Good evening. Is Tina in? Axel the vampire. Asking for money? <gasps> In episode two of King Solomon's Carpet by Barbara Vine, dramatized for radio by Nick Fisher, Alice was played by Kate Fennick, Axel by Mark Strong, and Tom by Jonathan Cullen. Jarvis was Kim Wall, Cecilia Ann Beach, and Daphne Linda Polan. Jasper was played by Stuart Morris, Bienvida Verity Waite, Dean Martin Kelly, and Damon James Bell. Tina was Alice Arnold, Peter Christopher Scott, and Daniel Alex Lowe. Ivan and the Russian were played by Christopher Pavlo. The musicians were Polly Hewitt, Roland Robert, and Christine Messeter. 
King Solomon's Carpet was directed by Mariam Nancaro. King Solomon's Carpet by Barbara Vine Dramatized for radio in four episodes by Nick Fisher Episode 3, Revengeful Love The mysterious and charismatic Axel Jonas has arrived at the school. I'm afraid Tina's not in at the moment. I see. Are you a teacher here? A teacher? Oh, that. No, it's not a school now. Of course it isn't. Is Jarvis in, perhaps? He's out too, I'm afraid. Are you a friend of his? Yes. Are you his girlfriend? Jarvis's? No, I just live here. But is it Jarvis or Tina you came to see? Both. You can give Tina this for me. Uh, which is Jarvis's room? I'll wait for him. Why is he here? How did he know? That looked like a sick note that Damon forged for me. I had one in my pocket. Axel must have taken it and got the address from Mum's name off of it. Let's phone the police. No way. Police are for sissies. But I'm frightened. Oh, do stop snivelling, B. I don't like it, Jazz. Tell you what, if you shut up, I'll show you my tattoo. What? You haven't got a tattoo. Want to bet? Oh, Brill. A lion. Brill, Jazz. Can I touch it? Touch it? Do you mind? Oh, you're still here. Time flies when you're reading something this engrossing. Jarvis knows the tube system so well. But I was rather hoping you'd come back. Really? Oh, yes. Though it's too late now, I have to go. I'm Axel, by the way. You're... Alice. Alice. Alice, come here. Why? Come here. Ah! What are you doing? This is a stranger. You've never seen him before. You don't know a thing about him. So what are you doing? Tom's upstairs just above you. He might come down looking for you at any moment. God, you're shaking so. Shaking. Shaking. We'll meet again soon, Alice. Goodbye. So I was thinking, I might invite Brian for Christmas lunch, too. Uh, have you told Tina? Not yet. But I so want to see her and Brian together again. I often imagine them getting married. I suppose Jasper and B and Vida would have to be there as page and bridesmaid. Mm. I'd have considered that very shocking once. But you adapt, Vera. Like I've had to adapt to Peter. Is he still with Jay? Yes. I'm sure it's just a passing phase. Of course it is. All he needs is for the right girl to come along and everything will change. They're so hard to understand. Peter and Jay? The younger generation. Ah. I've been taking my violin lessons very seriously. Madame Donsko is hugely respected, you know. So... Everything's working out nicely for you, then. It's coming along. You took your violin, but you left your baby behind. Mother, please, don't start. No, no, your father will never speak to you again, Alice. Ever. He put the phone down when I rang the other day. And he won't even ask how Catherine is. It's better if I don't know, isn't it? I've seen Mike a few times. He never mentioned you. He's thinking of moving in with Julia and her husband. Julia's a marvellous mother. She may not be a great beauty, but where do looks get you anyway? Every train is cleaned at night. On the central line, they're litter picked at the end of each journey. At Oxford Circus, 80 sackfuls of rubbish are collected every single day of the year, except Christmas Day, when no trains run. You never told me you were seeing your mother again. Why didn't you ask me to be with you? Tom, it's bad enough that I've left Mike. How do you think she'd react if I turned up with another man? Well, she's just going to have to get used to it. 
I'm the man in your life now, aren't I? We'll meet again soon, Alice. Of course. But, but I'm sorry, Tom, you can't meet my mother. Can't? Can't? What do you mean I can't? No, Tom, not this again. Don't no. Don't tell me what to do. You don't care about me at all, do you? Of course I care. You're treating me just like you treated your husband. That's what's going on here, isn't it? Oh, no, it's not. We'll meet again soon. I swear it's not. I care for you so much for you and your music. We'll get you back at college and everything will be all right. All your anger will drain away once you get back to learning. But I'm learning every day, Alice. And I've got such plans. You'll see. There's a journalist from the Standard who's going to do a piece on us. Classical buskers in the tube. We're going to be big, Alice. Big! During the Second World War, the London Tube became a shelter. Countless thousands of people slept on the platforms of the deep tube stations. And the British Museum hid its treasures in the tunnel between Hoban and Aldwych. Good night, Alice. Good day's work. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Mr. Christensen. Good night. And good evening. How... how did you know where I worked? Ah, uh, Tina told me. Or was it Jarvis? I forget. I didn't think I'd see you again. Well, I said we'd meet soon, didn't I? Well, yes, but... But you didn't believe me. Well, here I am. And here, it's a very nice wine bar. Champagne's perfect any time of the day. Mm. You know, the building where you work is very interesting. Or so Jarvis said. Apparently it's next to a building with a shaft coming up inside it that used to house a staircase to the central line. They took the stairs out and expanded it for ventilation. You could see the shaft opening from your office roof, I expect. Are you wild about the underground like Jarvis? Hardly. It's my enemy. Well, a thing can't be your enemy. Yes, it can, if it's done you wrong. I don't understand. No. Well, who are you? I, I mean, what, what do you do, Axel? I'm a photographer. And a bear leader. A bear leader? <laughs> a friend dresses up. We entertain people on the tube. I'm mad, you know. Clearly. No, I mean it. I'm quite insane. They say if you know it, you're not. Unfortunately, they're wrong. Try the caviar. How long have you been at the school? A matter of weeks, that's all. With dear old Jarvis, the landlord? Yes. He's going to Russia in a day or so. I'll get you a taxi home. But we've only just started. Waitress. Yes, sir? Would you order a cab, please? I have to be elsewhere. This will cover your fare. But Axel... Does a hundred meet my bill? Easily, sir. Keep the change. Goodbye, Alice. Goodbye. Thank you. You're most welcome. It is against the law, of course... No person while upon the railway shall, to the annoyance of any other person, sing, perform on any musical or other instrument, or use any gramophone, record player, tape recorder, or portable wireless apparatus. Excellent. A journalist who does her homework, eh, Peter? Yes. But that's the clincher, isn't it? To the annoyance of any other person. People aren't annoyed by what we do. They love it. Mm, great. <laughs> nice quote for me there. Mm. Now... Tell me a bit about yourself and your education. Well, I started training at the Guildhall, but I was involved in a motorbike accident that damaged a part of my brain. You've been uh, diagnosed as brain damaged? No, but, but I changed. That accident altered my perception of things. It diverted my talent along new paths and made me see that classical music shouldn't be confined to compact discs and concert halls. Terrific. <laughs> right. Now, I'd like a couple of photos to go with my article. Actually, you should be pretty photogenic. You're rather good-looking, you know. Oh, yes, Tom, maybe. The best way to take a snap of me these days will be in a big black cloak carrying a sign. <laughs> oh, I don't think that's quite... Um, uh, quite... A journalist. Lost for words. Peter... Don't, don't worry about him. He's got a dark sense of humour, that's all. <laughs> now, would you like me just 
relaxed or with the flute to my lips? Oh, with the flute up, I think. It was a simply lovely lunch. You've never cooked a better one, Ceci. The vegetables were peerless. I do so like your fluffy roast potatoes. Thank you, dear. And it was a nice succulent bird, wasn't it? I often find turkey a bit dry, but that one was just right. Do you think they all enjoyed it? Oh, yes. Isn't the Envida a sweet little girl? Yes. <laughs> and it was so nice to see Brian and Tina together. Perhaps they really will get married one day. Peter was looking a little better, I thought. But he's awfully thin. I wish he could just put on a little weight. He, he looks so frail these days. Well, I'm sure Jay sees to it that he eats well. That young man's quite a fusser. <laughs> the way he kept Peter away from Tina and her cold, you'd have thought she had yellow fever. Yes, he, he's a bit silly like that. Well, maybe the perfect girl will come along with the new year. Perhaps we can look forward to a double wedding in 1990. How wonderful that would be. <laughs> Dear Daphne... It's such a joy to have you to stay. It's lovely having the others here, but I must say it's nicer when they've left and there's just the two of us. Mm -hmm. Now, I've got a Christmas treat. A passage to India on video. <gasps> I can't tell you how pleased I was you rang. I was so frightened I wouldn't see you again. I only wish we could have met later in the day. I rather dislike making love in the afternoon. Making love. <laughs> You're very pretty when you blush. <sighs> Sorry, I saw Jarvis off at Heathrow this morning. Much too early, but there you are. He'll still be writing his opus in flight, I dare say. Now, I've got something to tell you. I do hope you'll be pleased. Will you pretend to be, even if you're not? I don't know. Oh, please. For me. All right. I'm coming to live in your house. Sorry? I don't understand. I'm coming to live at the school. But you can't. I, I mean, it's Jarvis's home. Well, naturally, I asked him. Or rather, he asked me. But you've already got somewhere. I can't go on sharing with a bear. Alice, you promised to pretend to be pleased with my news. I'm renting the art room in the fifth. Above me? Above me and Tom. Let's get you in the fresh air. You're looking a bit faint. Tell me, what do you believe in, Alice? What do you mean? In God, some principle, or what? Whatever you like. Well, I suppose I believe in music. I thought you might say that. Well, what do you believe in? Everlasting love. Love beyond the grave. Revengeful love and retribution. I have to go. Taxi! Go? But... But I thought you said... I have an engagement I absolutely must keep. But I'm coming to the school, and you must be happy about that. Will you take the young woman to West Hampstead? Starfish position. Not much to grip, but enough. And it gets easier the more you do it. So you can think about other things, like getting the bell right through the school. Or about Axel. What's he doing moving in? He doesn't seem to be interested in me, but I think I'll stay clear. Whoa! One of the old ghost stations. Shall I tell me? It'll frighten her. She likes being frightened. And when I get back, we'll go out for a meal. We can't afford Nonsense. It. Tom, I may be making £800 a month, but you're only making 80 It'll change soon. Wait till that piece comes out in the standard. Oh, oh. Hello. Hi. I'm Axel Jonas, a friend of Jarvis's. I've come to live here. Hello, Axel. Uh, I'm Tom. This is my girlfriend, Alice. Very pleased to meet you, Alice. Uh, I must go. See you later for that meal, darling. Come and have a drink in my room. Darling. There he comes. See, Damon just was done it again, but you still ain't been up there. You're wet. The seat of your jeans is soaking. It's not. You should be wearing nappies. Leave him be, Dean. 
But Jazz, he's chicken. He don't get up there and sledge. Chicky, leave him. Do you want the cigarette? Yeah. Let's get one in the doors before they close. Right, I'm going up. Quick, Jazz. Neat. Hey, where's the chicken gone? Up on the roof. He's going to sledge after. Are you really a photographer? Don't you believe me? Here. Have some whiskey. I don't know what to believe. You're not like anyone I've ever known before. I mean, most people don't say they're mad. Most people don't say they hate things like the tube. But most people are very dull. Yes. I am a photographer. There's my equipment. I'm also a psychologist, and psychologists are mad. If you'd heard that Freud wandered about Vienna with a bear on a chain, you wouldn't be incredulous. Why wouldn't you accept me? It just seems so strange. It is strange. Alice, I want to make love to you. And I... I want you too. Unfortunately, we can't do it here in the school. Why not? It would make things sordid. Tom might come back. Other people live here. No, it has to be somewhere else. But where? Love will find a way. We shall overcome. He's done the right thing. Sledge into Swiss Cottage will get rid of his fear. And stop Dean's taunting, which has been getting on my nerves, let alone Damon's. We're going down. I never noticed that before. Going down quite steeply. Need a good grip for this. Grip tight, Damon. Starfish and grip. You'll be all right. God, don't break like that, driver. What do you think you're doing? Damon's up on the roof. You can't do stupid things like that. It's hard enough for him already. We're going downhill. He's never tried it before, and he's fighting, so don't. Stop it! Stop it! He's hanging on by his fingernails already, you moron! Oh, no! No, hang on, Damon. Hang on! What? What's that? The window. In Tokyo, underground staff are employed exclusively to collect into baskets sleeves torn from passengers' clothes in the crush. That place where you work. Does anyone use it at night? No. Oh, except very occasionally the emergency room. If one of the senior partners has to stay overnight. There's a little sort of bedsit for them. A bedsit, Alice. Yes. Do you have a key? Well, yes, I do. Then get another one cut for me.、Uh, I'm not sure. I mean, don't you be... want to make love to me? Yes. Then get another key. We have nowhere else. Did you? Did you ever do it? No, I only watched Mum. Who are all those people who come round? London transport officials and a woman from the social services. She was offering counselling if you need it. I don't want to be taken into care. What? Counselling, isn't that like cancel care? Gary Stevens in our class was taken into care. Counselling doesn't mean that at all, Jazz. Now, promise me you'll never do what Damon did. I know boys will be boys, but this is different. All right, I promise I won't. And don't you dare tell your grandmother that poor Damon was a friend of yours. She'd worry herself sick if she knew. His death will be in all the papers, of course. But Damon's name won't mean anything to her. And there's some of your favourite smarties too. Thank you. That boy Damon, who was killed in the tube. Wasn't a friend of Jasper's, you know. Jas never goes on the tubes, ever. He doesn't ride on the top of trains, and he doesn't know anyone who does. I see. Where the hell have you been? I need to talk to you. What? What about? About this. Bloody journalists.、Oh, the article. <sighs> well, what did you expect, Tom? I'm not a send-up. She said she'd write a serious piece, and just look at the picture. Must be the worst one they took. Peter looks absurd. They say all publicity is good publicity. No, I don't see how it can be when it makes snide remarks about Peter being gay and says we only play in the tube because there's nowhere else for us. Tom, 
What were you hoping for with this article? Serious journalism about the serious work I do playing classical music for a mass audience. A good article could have got us a patron, a millionaire supporter of the arts who thought us worth subsidising. But this won't bring in a penny. And anyway, where have you been all evening? Oh, nowhere special. No, <laughs> I know what you've been up to. What? What do you mean? You've been seeing your mother again, haven't you? No, really, I haven't. I, I stayed late at the office. <laughs> late at the office. You were with your mother. Tom, I didn't see her today. Honestly. So these are the princely premises of Angle, Scherer, and Christensen. Are you secretary to all of them? Just James Christensen. And where is the little sixth floor bridal suite? Hmm? Through here. Functional, but well sprung. I always think a decent mattress is one of life's essentials, don't you? What did you say they call this place? The emergency room. Just so, for the resolution of a crisis. Sometimes I don't understand you at all. No. I saw Tom, you know, just a few minutes ago, wandering along from Covent Garden. Perhaps he's on his way up here. Perhaps he's coming up the stairs right now. He's never been. He doesn't even know where it is. Of course, he's probably heading back to the school to wait for you. What will you tell him that you've been seeing your mother, Axel? I believe. I love you. Then I think it's time you proved it. Don't you? All the lighted stations of the underground, busy with people, bright with advertising, noisy with the roar of trains, are also surrounded by a silent maze of dark, disused passages and shafts. There's been another bombing. Yes,、yeah, so、I heard in the Mall. They gave so much information on the news that I think I could make a bomb now, <laughs> if you could get hold of any Semtex. No, they said this one was a sort of gunpowder called um magnesium flash, but they've caught the man who planted it. You know. Oh, really? Yes, there's a picture of him in the late editions, here with a hair lip. A hair lip? You don't know him, I trust, Jas. Me? No, of course not. He looks like a bear, doesn't he? I'm going out to play. Careful. Sorry. Well, I've got my stuff. Thanks for looking after it, Tina. Ah,、oh, no bother. Mum, this is Daniel, an old friend from about ten years ago. Hi. Hello. Oh, don't forget to get those tickets for me, Daniel. Of course not. That that phrase sounds like a friend of Tina's from ten years ago. Look at his eyes. Yes, they're identical. He's exactly like Jasper. Grown-up version of, oh no, no, pray God no, but it is, you know it is. That's Jasper's father standing in front of you. Are you okay, Mum? Mum, you, you look a bit pale. It's just a bit stuffy in here. I'll be getting along. I'm I'm meeting Daphne at Selfridges. But what about your coffee? I, I don't want to be late. I, I'll be getting along. Life has no meaning. There's no morality, no ethics, no values. There's simply events, a series of ghastly, occasionally linked moments. That's all life consists of. Ivan, how could you do this? I need you. Mal, how could you? How could you get caught, you idiot? I thought you were a professional. All right, the article was a setback, but that's just temporary. I know what I'm doing. No one makes a fool out of me. I'm going to be so big. I'll apply for an audition at the Britain Peers School. They're sure to accept me. Then we'll see. Not a bad picture of me at all. It's a very good likeness. Yeah, the Grim Reaper at play. All these years, Tina's been taking money from Brian as if he were Jasper's father. She's tricked us all. 
Brian won't be being Vita's father either. That'll be someone else again. Nothing has any meaning. We just shuttle about like carriages in the dark. Sometimes meeting, but then off alone on our meaningless journeys. There's no right or wrong. Only chaos. <gasps> Where's my bag gone? It was right here. Someone's stolen it. Oh, no, no. On top of everything else. Now someone's stolen my bag. <gasps> what? What's happening? Your right hand's fine. And your right leg. But the left side's not working. It's gone numb. It won't move. What's... Bond Street. Get onto the platform. Daphne's here somewhere. Up. Out. Ah! Oh, you silly old fool. You've fallen over. Well, you would. How can you walk when your left side won't work? Cecilia? Cecilia? Everything will be all right now. Daphne can take control. Daphne, dear, I must have had a stroke, I'm afraid. Luckily, it was the right side of my brain. The left is dominant, so had it been that side, the damage would have been more serious and I wouldn't have been able to speak. Sorry, Ceci, what was that? <laughs> oh, Ceci. My dear... Dear Ceci. In episode three of King Solomon's Carpet by Barbara Vine, dramatized for radio by Nick Fisher, Alice was played by Kate Fennick, Axel by Mark Strong, and Tom by Jonathan Cullen. Jarvis was Kim Wall, Tina Alice Arnold, Cecilia Anne Beach, and Daphne Linda Polan. Jasper was played by Stuart Morris, Bienvida Verity Waite, Dean Martin Kelly, and Damon James Bell. Alex Lowe was Daniel. Other parts were played by Christopher Scott, Shirley Dixon, Elaine Pike, and Janet Moore. The musicians were Polly Hewitt, Roland Robert, and Christine Messeter. King Solomon's Carpet was directed by Marion Nancaro. King Solomon's Carpet by Barbara Vine Dramatized for radio in four episodes by Nick Fisher Episode 4, Out of This World After discovering that Brian is not her grandchildren's father after all, Cecilia has suffered a stroke. London, 1990 Oh, there you are at last. How is Britain, Piers? Very good. They said they'd let me know. Well, if none of these auditions work out, you can always come back to busking. Yes. Hey, cheer up. Oh, Tom, I'm tired. I'm so very tired. Well, then have a quick nap. I was just off to play at Tottenham Court Road anyway. Should be pretty lucrative. I'll see you later, darling. Sleep well. During the war, at night... Shelterers on the platform at Russell Square heard a soft, continuous roar coming through the tunnel of the Piccadilly line. This turned out to be the snoring of sleepers at Hoban, the next station down the line. Axel. Oh, I've been dying to see you. Then enter. Well, what's that on your hands? Oh, just a bit of magnesium powder. From the stuff you used to make the flash for old cameras, I'm experimenting with some original techniques. Talking of which, I'm getting a new assistant. Tom. What? He could use some extra money. We get on very well. I've had a lot of interesting chats with your Tom recently. What? What about? Alice, you don't think I'd talk to him about our little emergency room with its nicely sprung bed at Anglesher and Christiansen, do you? 
I don't know what to think. I just know I love you. Not that we'll go there any more. I've decided to put an end to all that. What have I done wrong? Nothing. It would just be so humiliating to get caught at your place of work. Home is best, Alice. There's a great big blank in the middle, dear. I remember seeing the children with Tina. Then the next thing was finding myself with you on the platform. I think that's often the way, Ceci. I have a feeling some awful things happened in that time, and they brought on the stroke. Well, you mustn't worry about that now. Do you believe in eternal life, Daphne? Do you think the soul leaves the body at the point of death and goes to a place of bliss? No, dear. No, I don't. Neither do I. But I now know one thing I would never allow before. You, Daphne, love me, Cecilia. Sounds like the wedding ceremony. You love me as I love you. And after so long denying that, it gives me so much pleasure, indescribably so, to say to myself, Daphne and I love each other. She won't get through these auditions, but it'll be for the best in the long run. She'll be much happier in an orchestra like mine, anyway. Tell me, what do you think of her? Of Alice? Me? Yes. Oh, I suppose she's very beautiful. But you're right to discourage her musical ambition. She hasn't got it in her. How do you know that? Oh, I don't know. I'm not an expert. But I did ask her to play for me the other day. I must say I was rather disappointed. You don't mind me being frank? Not at all. Actually, I see Alice much more as a homemaker. You should take her away from here. Give her that opportunity, Tom. Yeah. I'd love to. But, but how can I on the money I earn? Well, that's exactly what I want to talk to you about. You said yes to being my assistant. Now, you should know that may involve... Well, stepping the wrong side of the law. Do you know what a signals and communications room is? I could have a good guess. I want to take a photograph of something in the signals and communications room at Holborn, and that's why I need your help. Why do you want this photo? I'm a photographer. But taking pictures of things the authorities want to, want to keep secret sounds more like the action of a... of a spy. <laughs> a spy? <laughs> <laughs> How does ten grand sound? I'm sorry? Ten thousand pounds in cash. One up front, nine to follow. Okay? During the building of the Victoria Line... The diggers sometimes spotted a dark shape moving through the tunnel. J.R.R. Tolkien, author of The Lord of the Rings, says there is a creature, a thing, called a balrog, a vast black apparition that lurks in shadowy subterranean spaces. Daphne, can you see if you can find my handbag? Jasper and B and Vida should have a little something for spending money. Of course, dear. Spending money? How much? I was thinking of a pound each. A pound? Brew. I don't expect you'll use it to buy chocolate, will you? Not after the lovely cake Daphne made. I might spend it on Smarties. But I wish they'd make a pack of orange ones only. I'll eat the others for you. Though I sometimes worry the chocolate will be my undoing. Oh, I can't imagine that's going to hurt you. I can't spot your bag down here, Ceci. I haven't seen it for ages. Not since before this trouble. I wish I could remember what happened before I was taken ill. Contrary to what most people think, there isn't much crime in the underground. Indecent assault and pickpocketing in the rush hour are the most common nuisances. At the other end of the scale... No one has ever been murdered inside a London tube train. Axel? Axel? Hello? Are you... Alice? Oh. Hello, Tom. What are you doing in here? Waiting for Axel or something? I, I must have gone to sleep. You look completely worn out. I'm cold. I don't know what I'm doing here. Well, I certainly don't. Come on, we'll get you warmed up downstairs. I've got an Indian takeaway and some red wine. I'm not hungry. Oh, Tom. 
Tom. What is it, darling? It's just... I'm so tired of it all, this life. We won't be here much longer, Alice. We'll get a home of our own. That's what you need. I'm just so desperately tired of it all. I've turned the house upside down, dear, but, but I can't find it anywhere. You know, now I think I, I can't remember you having it with you when I found you at the station. But that's weeks ago. And Daphne, it's got all my credit cards in it oh. and my checkbook. Someone must have stolen it while we were on the platform. Surely no one would do that. Not seeing you so ill. People aren't as bad as all that, are they? They'd have drawn out all my money by now. I won't have any. I won't... Oh! Oh, no, no, Gaffney. It's coming again. It's like being hit inside by a train. But... You mustn't blame yourself. The rich fool could have been the initial cause. Now, she's quite comfortable, but I'd better phone round and see if we can get a bed. No, Doctor. I'll look after her here. She'll want for nothing, I can assure you. What are you doing? Waiting for you, of course. Well, what are you doing with that? Put it down! I'm sorry, I, I just... Don't touch my things. I just thought it was so pretty. Such a shame the figurine's broken. God, it's icy in here, isn't it? I'm so looking forward to getting away from this cold. You're not leaving? On Friday. Shall I take you with me? You don't mean that. I never say things unless I mean them. Can we really go away together? Why not? But where to? I'll fix something. Why couldn't we have got a taxi all the way? How have I got in here, anyway? Rope, mainly. I've got all the photographic stuff. Rope? To get me down the shaft, of course. What did you think I'd do, fly? Right. This is it. Use your torch. I'm not turning any lights on in here. And we're not using the lift. All sorts. You seem to know your way pretty well. I do, through here. Um. What a flat. It's odd, amongst all these offices. Well, via the window. Ow! What's up? I just stubbed my foot on something. A file. Angles? Sure. I'm dawdling. I'm coming! Across the roofs. Just follow me. Angle, Shara, and Christiansen. But that's where Alice works. Axel has keys. He knows the place inside out. He has keys to Alice's office. And to a flat. With a bed. What's wrong? Um, uh, sorry, nothing. What are you staring at? Oh, these. The keys interest you, do they, Tom? Yes, I can see they do. Is that where you're going? Down there? That's the shaft, yes. Yeah. Now, let's get this bolted together and attached. Just hold that tight against the parapet. Good. That can't budge. Okay. I'm going down. Some shafts once contained lifts, others staircases. You can look up through the inside of these enormous cylinders and see, in the dimness, the old Edwardian tiling, a yellow and brown design, spiralling the circular walls following the course of what was once a staircase. He has the keys to her office. And to the bed you just saw. They've made love in that bed. At the school, too, in his room, above yours. 
You'll never enjoy her again, Axel. In 1983, a vagrant tried to push someone under a train. He was charged with attempted murder. While locked in a police cell at Clapham with two other men, he successfully garroted one of his companions with his own shoelaces. He was subsequently sentenced to life imprisonment. Friday. We'll be going away. Axel will take me to somewhere new. Somewhere out of this world. Back just in time. Axel! I calculate you're halfway. You saw me looking at the keys. You realised I knew, yet it didn't bother you. Well, the knife I've just got from the flat where you seduced my lover, the knife that's now beginning to cut through your rope, may bother you more. I can see you now, Axel. Look up. Look into my eyes as I kill you! Everlasting love and retribution! You don't even begin to understand! What's that, Jazz? Rope. What does it look like? Spaghetti? Where did you get it from? I saw Axel cutting up this huge coil in the garden. He put this bit in the shed. I borrowed it. What for? B, use that brain of yours for once, if you've got one, that is. Right. No one will ever know what's happened to you, Axel. There's nothing left now to link you to the top of the shaft or to me. And you thought you were so clever, didn't you? Hello, Axel. What? Have you heard the news, Alice? Someone's tried to blow up the underground. Really? The bomber's in bits. Well, they didn't put it like that, but he must be. They did say he can't be identified. Mind you, he didn't do much damage, apparently. Perhaps he thought his bomb was bigger than it was. You didn't ring me this early to tell me about a bomb in the tube, surely? I thought you'd like to know Mike's got a new girlfriend. Shelley, a computer programmer, and she had... Doors, Catherine. Fifty-six people died and sixty-nine were injured when a bomb cut through the concourse beneath the street at Bank on the 11th of January 1941. The station collapsed and was closed for six months. I thought I'd find you here. There's no point in waiting, Alice. He's not coming back. What do you mean? What I say. Axel has departed. Well, why has he left all his things, then? He, he doesn't need them where he's gone. I don't believe you. I know all about you and Axel. He doesn't care about you. Not remotely. Not the way I did. Uh, he, t- he told me to tell you he's, uh, he's gone abroad. You won't see him again. <laughs> when I found out, I thought it would be all right once he'd gone. But it's not. It's spoilt. I don't want to see you again. Fine. I don't want to see you. You haven't a chance with him. I want you to know that. I don't believe him, Axel. You'd never have told Tom things like that. I trust you. Though there is so much I still don't know about you. What's this? Magnesium flash. Of course. The powder on his lovely hands. For the photography. To Axel with all my love. Alice. What? Am I... Am I just a substitute for some old flame? Is that what I am? Is, Is this hers too? But why would you keep this? And why is it broken? Silly you. You've dropped it. My poor figurine's broken. You're dying. Dying. 
And no one knows. Does a twin know? Will he feel something now? Somehow now? With you? As you? Die? You and your other Alice. How horribly happy you look. The twins at Temple Stephen. I can trust you. She's your twin sister. I should never have doubted you. You will come back to take me away to somewhere out of this world. Meanwhile, the IRA has issued a statement denying any responsibility. That's unusual. Daphne, if they find me a bed, I'll have to go into hospital. Over my dead body, this is your home. This is where you'll stay. And I'll never leave your side. Dear Daphne, I knew I could count on you. Yes, this is where I'll stay. That's right. Take my hand. I can feel you, you know. I can feel your pulse. So full of life. Oh! No! No! Oh, that's intolerable. Like a drill being pushed into my side. I... I can't take this anymore. I'm leaving this senseless world. It's time. Daphne, dear. I have loved you so. I have loved you all my life. With all my heart. I couldn't quite catch that, Sissy, could you? Sissy? Sissy? Oh, no, Sissy. Oh, no. My dear, dear, darling Sissy. Goodbye, dear. Goodbye. Huh? Fell asleep. Axel must be back by now. He'll take me away. I won't be so tired anymore. Everything's going to be all right. Gone? Everything? Then Tom was right. He doesn't care about me. He came like a thief in the night. The music's gone. Tom's gone. The only thing I ever had that was truly mine. My baby. Catherine. I left behind. Hello? Alice, it's me. I thought you should know that Shelley's moving in with Mike and they're getting Catherine back from Julia. Oh, have I told you she's walking now? I'm never going to speak to you again. Oh, yes. You can rest right here in the cloakroom. Nice and dark. A rope? In here? Of course. An old man hanged himself here. People say it's a quick way to die. A nice, clean, easy death. How do you make a noose? Tina! Tina! Chance B! How are you all? Oh, Jarvis! <laughs> I'd forgotten you were coming back today. How was the trip? Oh, it's fabulous. The Moscow Underground should be visited by everyone. I've got some amazing information. And I've almost finished writing about London's version of King Solomon's graffiti-covered magic carpet, alias the Jude. <laughs> Whatever's that? Jazz, it's your bell! How did you get the rope to make it ring without you being there? I'm not making it do anything stupid. 
It must be magic. It's from the school. It's the old bell. Oh, no. If Mum hears that, it'll bring up all the stuff about her brother's suicide. I'll, I'll, I'll see you later. What's going on? going on? Couldn't make the noose. Couldn't. Couldn't. I'm never, ever going to speak to anyone again. I don't want to be part of this world anymore. Mum? Mum, are you... It's all right. She didn't hear it, dear. She didn't hear it at all. What, what do you mean? She... Oh, Tina. Tina. She's gone. Only a few minutes ago. She died peacefully in my... in my arms. The busking's going really well, darling. I've got some great ideas for amplification and such. Things are getting better by the day. I forgive you. I've decided to take you back. Alice? She may be hearing you, but you won't elicit a reply. She's retreated into muteness. I'm afraid it's a severe condition, but we'll do all we can. Did Axel leave owing you rent, Jarvis? Who's Axel? You know, the good-looking one who saw you off at Heathrow and then came to live in five in the art room. Well, no one saw me off at Heathrow. Anyway, I don't know any Axels. Must have been a squatter. I bet it was Axel who blew himself up. So shall I tell? No. I'll keep that secret. I shan't even tell B. I wonder what it's like if you blow yourself up. Right, Axel. Time to erase every memory of you. <laughs> Alice thinks you ran out on her. She never realised I shifted your things for safekeeping, shall we say? Tucked away till today for cremation. <sighs> the tinny little sound. Ah, wait till I get the Vogue Converter 5000 going at High Street, Ken. Well... Thanks for that, at least, Axel. Your money paid for it. <laughs> What's this? A mag? Flash? Uh, probably just some old photographic junk, anyway. Right. The last trace of Axel is hereby confined to the fire. I win, Axel. Ashes to ashes. <laughs> from the fire from Axel's package rips into me it's so fast it's almost as if it comes from inside me and now in this tiny moment of time that claw serenely takes me out of this world calmly tears me to pieces Quite dead. Gone. Out of this world. For good. In King Solomon's Carpet, dramatized for radio by Nick Fisher, Alice was played by Kate Fenwick, Axel by Mark Strong, and Tom by Jonathan Cullen. Jarvis was Kim Wall, Tina Alice Arnold, Cecilia Ann Beach, and Daphne Linda Polan. Jasper was played by Stuart Morris, Bienvida Verity Waite, Dean Martin Kelly, and Damon James Bell. Alex Lowe was Daniel. 
Other parts were played by Christopher Scott, Shirley Dixon, Elaine Pike and Janet Moore. The musicians were Polly Hewitt, Roland Robert and Christine Messiter. King Solomon's Carpet was directed by Marion Nancaro.